Hello, welcome to On Voice. I'm here with Priscilla Anthony, the voice specialist, speech and language mm-hmm. therapist. So mm-hmm. the concept of the show is um, that we answer your questions, or Priscilla answers your questions, on um, general voice, performance voice, mm-hmm. transgender voice, working as a speech and language therapist, or a voice specialist, um, and everything kind of in between. <laughs> um, so let's get into the questions. Looking at voice, mm-hmm. uh, you hear a lot about honey, lemon, and ginger. You do. Does it improve your voice? Um, it, it, it's a question I get asked a lot, really, about things that would help the voice. Let's let's stick with the kind of drinks things at the moment. So. Definitely things like honey and ginger are antibacterial and that kind of thing. So they've got properties in them that are are helpful. I think if your voice is sick because you've got a cold or a flu, those things at the very least are going to be soothing. Of course, ginger has known anti-inflammatory properties, so it could help in terms of getting that throat less less inflamed, less sore, or at least bring some kind of comfort. Um, Lemon, again, is a very alkalizing. Even though it's citrus, it's alkalizing. So it's, it's, it's... there's probably a very strong argument for that. It's got a lot of vitamin C as well. Um, probably the alkalizing probably helps a bit with reflux type things. So in that in that way, they're, they're good things to have in your body um, and nutritious. However, if there is an issue with, with, with something on the vocal cords, like a paralyzed vocal cord or a scar on the vocal cord or nodules on the vocal cord or cysts, those kind of things are not going to remove that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think because people feel better taken and they often think it's going to cure or they hope it's going to cure that kind of stuff sure. and I often have to break the news and say no, do them because they feel comfortable and they might make it feel a bit better but they're not going to actually get rid of things like pathologies or, mm. or vocal cords that aren't working well. Usually that is, a, that is a rehabilitation therapy exercise program that people have to go through. Yeah. So that's the truth about that. Right. <laughs> so gender. Yeah. Last week we talked estrogen Mm -hmm. this week it's testosterone's turn yeah what effect does testosterone hormone therapy have on the voice so testosterone therapy given to people transitioning into male will have a direct effect on the vocal cords Um, it will thicken them because that's what it does it makes the vocal cords thicker um, and thicker vocal cords will make a deeper um, voice basically Mm -hmm. deeper pitch lower pitch Um, so um, even though it has, on most people it have a quite a strong effect, there are people where it does has quite a mild effect, or um, it, it usually doesn't have no effect at all, but it's often less than people would hope for. Sure. So um, traditionally, um, not very many um, trans males came to voice therapy uh, because you know the testosterone was thought to do everything they needed. Right. Um, but as more and more um, people have transitioned into male, I suppose the, the higher numbers have kind of also brought with it people who are noticing that actually they're not that happy right. with the voices. They don't think it's gone low enough. They would like it to go low. And pitch and low, low pitch and voice is just one aspect of voice and communication. There are several aspects, things like intonation um, and resonance that, that um, sometimes can benefit from assistance um, mm-hmm. in terms of seeing seeing a specialist to help those aspects develop a bit further right. and also um, testosterone won't, won't make the voice louder necessarily so um, reducing a bigger voice from smaller structures also can benefit from some guidance from right. a professional sometimes so it will change a lot of things but not necessarily everything yeah but primarily it will change the pitch and lower the pitch but it won't necess- it won't necessarily make a person feel 100 percent happy with their voice right um conversely there'll be some people who just went on testosterone and were blown away by what happened and never never come and see a speech therapist right so it's it's very much on an individual case by case basis again yeah of course yeah so slts mm-hmm. um another common question that mm-hmm. we get um, what would you target for somebody who has a breathy voice? Yes, well, it's a kind of a very general question, a good question, but it's um, people have breathy voice for different reasons. Right. So I would first ascertain is, um, do they have a diagnosis that you know about, or is it just a breathy voice without any particular diagnosis? Generally, breathy voices come because 
the vocal cords are not closing as they should. Now people can learn to kind of do that themselves, just kind of hold the vocal cords apart, um, and um, which even though sounds soft is not a very efficient way of using your voice because you're losing air through the gap between the vocal cords. So anyway, whatever the reason was, I would be asking them usually to target um, closure exercises. So there's, there's, there's different types of exercises that help you close the voice, but just if, for example, um, doing a vowel onset like A, bringing the course together, that little very light click you hear at the start is what's necessary in speech quality to bring the vo vocal cords together. Right. If I said A, hey, like that, you will hear the difference as opposed to A. Right. So getting teaching people how to make that closure. So, is that like a slightly harsh sound? No, actually it gets very much mistaken with hard, what's known as hard glottal attack, which would be right. A. Right. So if someone has a very hard attack like that, you would be looking to normalize it to A. Uh, right. that E, that's a normal glottal stroke where the vocal cords are touching together uh, lightly, just briefly, just before the vowel explodes, because without that, you will get a A hey, kind of sound, right. just air coming through, or the opposite, if it's a bang, A, hey, you'll get a, just too hard a pressure. So voice is something that needs to be in balance, and when it's working well, you don't even think about these things. Mm -hmm. But when voices start to go wrong, either not having enough closure or having too much closure are the kind of things we try to put, you know, back in balance into just normal closure. Right. So it's the closure when Clo it comes to breath. Your yeah, voice. that's it. But bringing vocal cords closure. together without banging them together basically right. is the key. Right. Lovely. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you do want to follow Christella, mm -hmm. you can follow her on Twitter at Christella Voice or on Instagram at Christella Anthony or Facebook at Christella Anthony Voice. You should probably combine all those together into <laughs> one simple one. Um, and also don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much. Bye. Mm -hmm.